Hey, happy Thursday, everybody. Mark again here, Weatherman Plus. Now, I'm going to show you the latest information of what we have coming at the end of December going into January for New Year's. Now, we still have this storm coming for Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, bringing snow, still bringing some freezing rain, and then storms for everybody else, potentially forming something else up over the Northeast after seven days. Don't depend on that. I'm still showing the high pressure will move away. However, I will show you the latest information. But if you've never been here before, make sure you subscribe. I am all year long. Make sure you click that bell and select all so you get all the information, all the latest updates that I do post. Because this will shift around a little bit. But we have a big freeze coming for New Year's all the way down towards the Gulf. Everyone involved is going to feel this, especially with the wind chills. It is going to be unbelievable. Now, this is just right for winter, and this is what we expect this time of year. But this is going a little further than what we expect. It's because we have a low jet stream coming in for January, bringing some storms to the south as well, and potentially some southern snow. Now, you can see here with the Euro, you have that first system over here in the southwest, that second one still in the northwest. Those two still come together, bring that Christmas Eve snowstorm, still bringing this warm temperatures up with all this rain, and still bringing some freezing rain and some mix along with that as well. As you go through Christmas Eve, you bring the snow in the purple, the rain in the green, the freezing rain in the pink. As you go overnight into Christmas Day, then it pivots creates another second surface low that goes up towards the Great Lakes and leaves that there almost like a stall, building up all that snowfall as that becomes rain all the way towards east. Now, potentially, after you go seven days, take this part with a grain of salt. We all know everything changes. Look what changed in this storm just overnight, guys. Still bringing some rain, but now it's showing maybe it could bring back that chance for that freezing rain and that snow could bring a big swath of snow towards the central U.S., going towards the upper Midwest. Potentially over a foot, showing almost a chance for two feet of snow. A lot. Now, maybe after seven, eight days, that could add up to more snowfall for the Northeast, for the Great Lakes. I'm still showing that high pressure is going to move, and this won't be there. So don't count on it. I will keep you updated. But also showing that transition of a lot of freezing rain and going into Canada with a lot of freezing rain and potentially adding up more after that. So take this part with a grain of salt. They still need to fine tune this. But you can see over here for the central U.S., for the north, central, upper Midwest, a great chance of over an inch. Hopefully that does come down. That would be a lot of definite power outages. So be aware of this transition of freezing rain to ice. Now the sleet, the ice don't show as heavy, maybe up to a half an inch. The freezing rain looks like it's gonna be heavier. Matter of fact, you look at a control member with the Euro, you can see that it is exactly what is predicting on that snowfall and for Northern Minnesota to UP of Michigan, and maybe still showing that that could happen in the Northeast. All this blue is all three to five inches. And once you go to that purple, you go seven to nine. And it will bring across the central U.S., bring a lot of flooding for people that's not getting that snowfall and across the south and potentially going right up the northeast as well. Don't know yet if there's going to be snow or rain. I'm counting on rain because the high pressure that was blocking it is moving away. So here's your latest threats for today. You're still in that moderate level for flash flooding for California, the marginal, the slight risk, and the moderate level. Now for tomorrow, this is still moving towards Arizona, but it has ramped up some. Now you have the marginal and you have the slight risk for flash flooding for tomorrow. So be aware of this. All the way past Prescott, Phoenix, you're in a slight risk. All the way down to Tucson, you're in a slight risk. Now, after tomorrow, this is going to move across the South Central. Then you're going to have some more flooding coming across the South U.S. So Saturday, you have a marginal for flash flooding for the DFW down towards Houston and some of Oklahoma. As you go through Sunday, look at this, already a slight risk. Now, this is going to be good for your drought, but this is going to bring a lot of flooding, a lot of marginal and a slight risk all the way up into Arkansas. As you go through Monday, it's going to move further across the South and East, guys bringing a big slight risk for flash flooding, but a big marginal all the way into the Carolinas. And just so you can see, that's what Weather Prediction Center is showing as well. So you have these storms in the southwest and the rainfall coming as well. As you go through Saturday, that's when the storm's going to congeal up. And as you go through Sunday, now you have likely snow in the dark blue, a chance for snow in the light blue. Where you surface low right here over Kansas is where they're showing it bringing all these thunderstorms in the red and all this rain to the north. As you go through Monday, same thing, a chance for snow in the light blue and likely snow in that dark blue where everyone else is getting all this rain. Now you're getting thunderstorms in the south and east, 
As you go through Tuesday, look how it transitions across. You still have the high pressure, but Wednesday, the high pressure moves away. And all this is storms. Showing Thursday, you could still get that surface low building. So far, showing rain. I will keep you updated on that. Now, there is one day of severe weather so far for Friday for hail, and it is for Arizona. So far, here's your cities at risk for Friday. National Weather Service has as isolated thunderstorms are possible on Friday from Southern California across much of the southwest. Some hail is possible across southeast Arizona and far southwest New Mexico Friday afternoon and evening. But now as we go into January, you can see with your EPO, your East Pacific Oscillation, just your jet stream on the west coast. We have that dip coming in for that storm still from the Christmas Eve, Christmas Day. And then we're going to get a big dip that's going to drag all the way into January 1st for the deepest and then the jet stream is going to stay southern as it slowly retracts back up. So you can see here with your winds at your jet stream, your 200 millibar level, as you go towards the end of December, it gets a real deep troughing all the way into Mexico, and it stays there all the way for the beginning of January. Keeps fluctuating, but keeps going to that southern dip. Look, it's going all the way into the Bay of Campeche, and maybe all the way up towards the northeast, a big dip coming for January. And you can see your Arctic Oscillation, your cold air. So as your cold air starts moving in for Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, retracts back a little bit after that, a little bit of a warm up, guys. But then it's going to slowly start transitioning down into the U.S. as we go through New Year's and go deeper and deeper as we go through the middle of January and maybe stay there. That's where some really cold air is going to come in all the way to maybe the end of January. So you can see this here from the GFS. So as you look at your lower level temperatures, your 850 millibars, as you go through Christmas Day, you have your freezing temperatures at 850 millibars. This is not reaching ground level this far to the south. I will show you. But as that swings all the way to the east, it brings cooler temperatures with it on the southern side of the U.S. as you go through Tuesday and Wednesday, and then goes out through the northeast on Thursday and Friday, potentially bringing that other piece of snow. Then after that, for New Year's, brings a big blob of cold air on down, all the way towards the Bay of Campeche, swings all the way towards the southeast around the third, and still comes in even more after that. Brings a big dip. Now this pink right here, this would be Arctic air. This would be the negative 10, 15 degrees, not even counting wind chills. So as we look at our temperature anomaly, let's know if we're above average or below average temperatures around this time. Euro don't go this far, but I will keep you updated. But you can see with the Euro in the last couple of days that you do get this below average temperature start moving in. Now all that purple starts going towards 20 and that dark purple starts going almost towards 30 degrees below average what you get for this time of year. And then you see how that swings all the way towards the south and it don't go too far with the euro. Already bringing anywhere from 10 to 15 degrees below average temperatures for what you get for this time of year and even colder to the north. But that's literally at the 10 days. Now, if you go by the GFS, you can see it does bring that cool air down and it brings it even further and stays down there all the way to the second, the third, now we got even colder temperatures coming down 20 to 30 degrees below average for the beginning of your winter as that comes shooting on down. And look at this. Now it's hitting potentially Texas with this 20 to 30 degrees below average temperatures coming down for you and swinging towards the south and the east. Very cold temperatures. Now this will change. This will fluctuate. But with a southern jet stream, it is going to easily pull these cold temperatures down to the south. Now Texas, don't freak out. This is not like that big freeze I warned you about in the past. This is not like that. But it is going to bring very cold temperatures down with a very cold wind chill to it. And this is going to go across the south and east across the whole U.S. Maybe miss a little bit of the mid-Atlantic. We will see. So here's an updated glance at our temperatures as we go through the 30th, the 31st. And now we're going into New Year's, bringing a big freeze all the way down to the south. Potentially bringing 20 degrees all the way into Texas, Louisiana, even all the way into Mississippi, Alabama. The whole country feeling this freeze. Still 40s and 50s along the west coast and still across the southeast, but this moves towards the southeast as we go to the third as well. 
bringing very cold temperatures down potentially towards southern Louisiana, southern Mississippi, and as you go to the third for the southeast, going towards northern Florida as well. And now you're getting some of those very cold temperatures starting to move in as you get a dip of negative 10, negative 15 degree temperatures moving in. And that swings also a little bit deeper into our U.S. as you go for the fifth, coming in even more, and the sixth, swing a little bit further towards the east. Now, all the very cold temperatures do stay up in Canada at this time, and I am showing still this potentially is staying until the 15th of January, then maybe coming in the U.S., guys. But with the wind chills, it's really going to feel cold. So here you are on Christmas Day, cold air coming down. This is your wind chills, and that blob of cold air for the 26th, the 27th, and the 28th for that storm going up towards the 29th and 30th, Florida Northeast, potentially bring a snowstorm. Now, this is your wind chills. So here you go for New Year's Eve, that big drop of cold air for New Year's Day. Wind chills going all the way down towards the Gulf, guys. Feeling like you're in the 20s now with your wind chills for New Year's. For the second, going a little bit further towards the south. And as we go towards the third, it's going to go more towards the southeast, towards Florida. Look at these very cold wind chills. Now you feel like potentially in the 20s for northern Florida. And now you're starting to feel like negative 20 degrees for the north, central, and the upper Midwest. And as you go into the fourth, it comes in a little bit further, guys. Bringing maybe single-digit wind chills into Texas. And a lot of the country feel like single digits to negative temperatures. So really got to watch this transition for the beginning of January. And showing with the Euro and the GFS, both of those agree this cold air is coming in like that. It's only the Canadian that's a little further to the north. We see here the Euro in the blue, the GFS in the red. They agree that this is coming deeper into our country. Colder air is coming in. And with that lower jet stream, potentially bringing some snowfall across the south and potentially across the mid-Atlantic as we go through January. Now, so far, when you look at the ensembles, all the way from the northwest to the southwest, you can see right here in the control member, you're not getting a lot of snow all the way to January 6th. That's because this jet stream is going to be lower. All the precipitation is going to be lower. Now, when I look for the south, still showing it's not trending, guys, a lot. There is some <laughs> crazy big hits in there. That would be devastating. Don't count on that. And I am showing a little bit where it's almost a 50-50 where you might get a dip. But you can see right here that we've seen this morning with the GFS. And you can see right here in your control member right here, showing more than likely the temperatures will not meet the precipitation, guys. It will be cold, but it just won't be there. I will keep you updated. And I checked for the southeast as well. You can see there is some pretty big hits as well as what we see this morning. You see a control member showing the cold temperatures will be there. But not the precipitation, probably not getting that southern snow. I will keep you updated. You can see for the Great Lakes and the Mid-Atlantic, some of them showing a lot of good chances of getting a nice snowstorm coming out of it, guys. Now, for some reason, your control member is saying no. And for the Northeast, you can see how many shows that you will be getting some kind of snowstorm coming out of this pattern, which is what I do believe, guys. Some reason the control member is not showing it yet. I will keep you updated. I do believe the Northeast will see a big storm come out of this pattern change. Now you can see this transition when you look at our temperatures. So for the next six to 10 day, your above average temperatures and all of this red, your average in this gray, we start getting a little below average for Southern Texas, Southern Louisiana, we start getting this lower jet stream. And when you go from the eight to the 14 days, now you can see how it transitions where you're getting this average temperatures right here, but now you're starting to get a below average temperatures kicking in for Texas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Florida, Georgia, South Carolina, a little bit North Carolina, and really cold for Southern Florida, getting really below average as we go into this transition. Thank you again for your time, everybody. Hope you have a very great day today. If you enjoyed this video and it has helped you in any way, consider leaving a like, sharing this video to others. Let them know what is coming. Even though it's our winter season, some very cold temperature change is going to be coming in soon, and they do need to prepare for these changes. Psalm 119, 1 through 7. Blessed are the undefiled in the way, who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are they that keep his testimonies, and that seek him with the whole heart. They also do no iniquity, they walk in his ways. Thou hast commanded us to keep thy precepts diligently. 
O oh, that my ways were directed to keep thy statutes. Then shall I not be ashamed when I have respect unto all thy commandments. I will praise thee with uprightness of heart when I shall have learned thy righteous judgments. Amen. Have a great day, everybody. And thank you so much for all of you that gave the happy birthdays to my 12-year-old daughter for yesterday. As you all know, I do homeschool, so it's very hard. I have to plan outings for them to be with other children. So it's very hard for them to be with other children other than school and field trips and such. So it was very nice for her to see so many people thinking about her. It really made her day. Thank you so much. Next year, I will be dealing with a teenager. <laughs> all glory. <laughs> All glory goes to God, our Father in heaven, Yahweh. And I hope he always keeps you safe every day of your life, you and your family, and forever. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Have a great day, everybody. Prepare for these temperatures coming.